Hi and welcome to Batty.com. Today I'm going to show you how to diagnose and fix a faulty tachometer needle. We have connected our Batty.com instrument panel tester which provides a tachometer signal to the cluster. We've set it to 6000 RPM maximum scale. And when it outputs 6000 RPM, what we see is the cluster. The cluster is indicating about 7000 RPM. Um, something else that, that typically happens is it will go full scale and then dip below zero. Both of those are common. Both of those are caused by a faulty tachometer calibration IC inside the cluster. So the first thing we'll do is we'll remove the 14 screws from the back side of the instrument panel. I'm using a Torx 15 bit, but you could also use a 7 32nd inch socket. Okay, once we get those 14 screws out, we'll remove the black plastic cover and set it aside. We will lift the instrument panel away from the front bezel. Next, we'll very gently lift the LCD panel away from the electrical connector at the top left. We're going to do this slowly. We're going to do this using our fingers. We're not ever going to do this using a screwdriver or other pry bar. If we break that glass, replacements are not available. We'll pull it slightly and then we're going to lift it up and away from these two tabs in either corner so that it does not break when we pry it away from the screen. We're going to set that safely aside. So next, we're going to lift the circuit board gently away from the plastic housing. We want to make sure this electrical connector is not caught on anything. Okay, and we're going to set this face up out of the way. The tachometer calibration I see is this white one in the center of the board. In particular, we're looking for any bubbling on the surface of this resistor that would indicate that it's been overpowered. We can measure between pins 4 and 10 we should see 270K to 300K. When I measure this, I read 229K, which tells me it's very low, which tells me it's very low, and it's probably why we're seeing the, the excess needle movement that we're seeing. Batty.com sells a replacement for the tachometer calibration IC. This is it. We'll replace this IC with the new part. Okay, the kit comes with an IC and it also comes with a, a supply of solder. We're going to use some of that solder or the rosin in that solder to freshen up the solder, solder joints to freshen up the solder joints on the IC before we start the removal process. We're actually adding more solder. The reason for this is it puts a little bit of the rosin that's in the solder on that connection, which makes the solder flow better. So we're using a solder removal tool. We're applying heat to the solder connections and then vacuuming the solder away. Another way to do this is with solder braid. I'll show you that in a second. 
Okay. All right. It's, it's mostly out. I'm going to just I'm going to demonstrate the use of solder braid. This is solder this is a solder removal braid. We will press the braid into the space between the pin and the pad. The solder flows into the solder braid and away from the connection. And we've done a good job of the removal process because the IC pops right out. The IC installs in this orientation. We're going to align pin 1 marked on the board with pin 1 marked right next, next to one of the pins. We're going to move this capacitor as far up as it will naturally go. And we'll install the IC. Next, we'll use our soldering iron and we'll solder each of those connections. I start with the ends just to hold it in place and then fill in the spaces that I missed. One of those connections is not soldered. The reason for that is that there is no trace or no pad on the board to solder to. It's just kind of a no connection pin. When you're done it should look like that. If you want to remove any excess resin, I would use a to an old toothbrush and some rubbing alcohol and just kind of scrub it two or three times and the resin will come right off. Okay, the setup we see here is I have my instrument panel tester outputting 6,000 RPMs to the cluster. I have a jumper lead between the... doesn't matter. Um, and what we see is that the, uh, the needle is pointing slightly high. Uh, the reason for that and the reason for the adjustment on the tachometer calibration IC is that this is the way the factory did it. They used a laser to trim a resistor until all of the tolerances of the gauge were dealt with. We're going to do this manually. We're just going to turn the, the potentiometer counterclockwise until it reads 6,000 RPMs. That looks pretty good to me. Next we'll reassemble the gauge. All right, these are for you. Okay, to reassemble the gauge, we'll replace the circuit board, press it gently onto the pins of the analog gauges. Okay, we're going, to make, we're going to make sure that none of the pins from the analog gauges are sticking out through the circuit board. When we press it into place, these look good. Next, next we'll replace the rear face plate. Use a flat bladed screwdriver to maneuver the tabs under the circuit board. Next we'll reinstall the eight screws that hold on the back side of the cluster, but we won't reinstall the screws that hold the bezel in place yet. Okay, next we'll reinstall the LCD light gasket and the color filter. We want to make sure that the notch is on the left side so that it clearances for this electrical connector. We want to make sure that everything fits below this plastic tab here. Then we'll gently reinstall the LCD panel. Before we press that in, 
Before we reassemble this, we're going to make very sure that the entire edge of the glass panel is below this white strip of plastic. If we don't do that, if we trap the glass between the plastic and the bezel, we'll crack the glass. So be very, very careful on this step. Make sure that you can feel that the glass is completely, completely below this white line. When you're sure of that, we'll reinstall the plastic. Lastly, we will reinstall the six screws that hold the bezel in place. There are two on the top, four on the bottom. So that is the reassembly process. Next, we'll use our instrument panel tester to make sure everything is working. We've set our instrument panel tester to the approximate year of the cluster and to 6,000 RPM, which is the full-scale reading of this uh, tachometer. We'll press Next. We see the LCD screen is working. We'll press Next again to get to the tachometer test. It is currently reading 0 RPM. We see that the needle is centered. We press next to get to 3000 RPM and we see it is exactly on 3000 RPM and it exactly aligns with 6000 RPM so we have successfully repaired this tachometer. Thank you very much for watching. You can find parts for this repair as well as an instrument panel tester at batty.com that's B-A-T-E-E dot com B-A-T-E-E dot -E -E com Thank you for your support.